Hey, what's going on guys? Threat Level Midnight here, and today I got a tabletop review for you. Uh, I've been working with Cross Armory for a little while, and they were nice enough to send me their Cross Armory Shadow Red Dot Optic. Um, I also picked up a set of the uh, upgraded pens for my golden uh, Gen 5 Glock here that I have upgraded with a lot of their stuff already. Um, so I didn't see any reviews for this Red Dot online. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it through its paces. It advertises a lot of things, so I'm going to do everything that I can from the bench to see see if it lives up to its uh, its advertisement here. Uh, and I'm going to film it all in one take, um, so I, I guess you'll just see it in kind of real time uh, what uh, what this thing's made of. So let's go over some of the features just right on the box. It says it has a two-minute auto shutoff and shake awake, which is kind of the gold standard in red dots now. It also says IPX6 waterproof, uh, which is basically, it says it can withstand uh, powerful jets of water from all directions. Uh, so in essence, waterproof, it's just not rated for a certain depth uh, and for a certain amount of time. So I'll go ahead and throw this thing in the water for a little bit and see what happens. Uh, snag free, I mean, that's kind of easy to test out. Um, it's, I would compare it more so to like a Hollow Sun 407. It's just got a three MOA dot, uh, the non-adjustable reticle. Like I know some of the Hollow Suns have those adjustable reticles, but it's priced at 189 on their website, which is pretty cool. And that makes it really competitive to me. So box is just kind of your standard fare cardboard box. There's a little QR code that'll take you to their webpage. Um, and let's see what's inside. So normal kind of packaging materials, lens wipe, like we have a user manual here and here's the red dot itself so looks like it's in a it's in a plastic bag and it has a little rubber cover on it so those are always nice to have for long-term storage so right away i know that i gotta i gotta open the thing up i gotta pull it off the mount and load the battery from the bottom which not a deal breaker for me. I have red dots like that and uh, if it truly lives up to its 50,000 hours that shouldn't be a problem at all all right, so I apologize about that intermission. Got a baby making some noise in the background. Um, so we'll set this down, see what else is in the box here. So have uh, kind of your standard set of small uh, small wrenches here. It looks like there's three different, uh, three different types. Um, there's one Torx. It looks like it's for the hardware here. And, uh, and then maybe for the adjustments right here as well. You have a separate size wrench. Uh, and then let's see what else we got. And we have the uh, hardware. It looks like it comes with a, a lot of different screws here for a lot of different uh, mounting options, which is pretty cool. I want to make sure that this mounts up to a lot of different guns. So we'll go ahead and test that out. And then runs off of your kind of your standard Red Dot uh, 2032 battery. Um, I prefer this over the, uh, the smaller cell batteries. I always have a ton of these on hand anyways. So that'll about settle what's in the box. So uh, let's get into some features. All right, so we use kind of that medium-sized uh, hex key that it came with. Looks like it's about a two millimeter, and just undo these screws real quick uh, and get a battery inserted into this thing. And I do really like that it comes with a uh, a pick rail mount. Uh, I use these red dots on a lot of things. Uh, I'm probably going to end up using this red dot in a uh, three gun shoot coming up, where I'll be shooting in the uh, heavy metal category, which is 308 rifles. Uh, so I'll end up mounting this one offset on my M1A. Uh, but it's got four pins that uh, hold it into place. Um, so it should be a pretty solid lockup. Let's go ahead and get this battery installed. All right, battery just presses right in there. Drop that back on. And I can see that emitter turned on already. Good. Wrench these back down. And I'm going to go ahead and cinch them down pretty good um, because I am going to end up throwing this thing in the water. I don't want to taint the test by uh, not torquing these screws back down and letting water in through the bottom, through the where the battery compartment is. All right, so there you have it. Now, uh, we have a battery installed. Let's see. There we go. Let's see if we can get it in front of the camera. Oh, I had a little trouble getting it in front of the camera there, but you can uh, you can see there's the uh, there's the dot right there. I'll try to focus it a little bit better and see how uh, bright this thing gets. 
and that might be maximum brightness right there. Um, and that's pretty darn bright. Uh, you might not be able to tell through the camera, especially with the backlighting on, but that's, that's pretty bright. All right, so if we go just right down the list, it says that there's a two minute auto shut off. So let's get this thing set up on the bench and uh, I'll run a timer for two minutes and we'll see if it just turns itself off. Okay, so we got our site set up just sitting on the box right here. You can tell it is on, it is on its max brightness and just so we can keep it fair, I have a timer here set for two minutes and we'll go ahead and start. Okay, well, how about that? Pretty much exactly at two minutes, the thing turned right off, and as soon as even the phone tapped the box, it woke right up. So that kind of kills the first two things right there. So two-minute auto shut off, definitely. Uh, shake awake, uh, yep, instantly. So next thing on the list is IPX6 waterproof. So we go ahead and get some water, and we'll go ahead and give this a shot. Okay, guys, so now we have a, uh, a dish full of water here. It is real water. Nothing special about it. It's uh, room temperature water. It's not boiling hot. It's not freezing cold. Um, this thing is powered on, max brightness. Now remember, IPX6 um, is water jets from all directions. It doesn't say anything about submersion completely, but for intents and purposes, it should be more or less submersible and, and rainproof and everything like that. So I'm just going to drop this thing in and shake it around a little bit. And shake it off, and that works just fine. Um, no problems there. It it really doesn't. There's like little areas that are sealed up here, like the sensor, like for the light. Everything's sealed up real well, and it looks like around the battery compartment that made a good seal as well. Um, so why don't we put like, even though it's not quite rated for submersion for any amount of time, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for like 30 seconds. And we'll just drop it in and see what happens. So, 30 seconds on, go ahead and start. All right, that's been 30 seconds, submerged. And let's see how we're doing. Shake it off. Well, it looks just fine to me. And uh, there was like a little bit of bloom on the emitter right there, but let's see if I can get it to focus. That looks totally fine. And when I look through it with like my naked eye, even though it might look like on camera, there's some bloom on the uh, on the dot. There's really not. It's perfectly crisp. Uh, so does it pass IPX6? Uh, I'd say so. I mean, I don't know how to, I'm not going to spray it with the hose. I'm just going to throw it in the bowl of water. So uh, I'd say it passes the IPX6 test. Um, snag free is what's next on the, uh, on the box. Uh, there's no sharp edges on it. I can vouch for that. So we'll go ahead and give it a pass for snag free. But let's look into some of the other features it says it has. So as we look at the next advertisement on the box right here, uh, we say eight brightness levels plus two night vision. Um, sometimes companies will say they have night vision compatibility when really it's just their their emitters get really dim and they're not uh, projecting like IR or they're not so low, but uh, we'll go ahead and put that to the test. I'll be filming through a PVS-14, and just bear with me because I'm going to have to film through the PVS-14 through the red dot uh, to get this for you. So let's go ahead and check uh, if there is eight levels of brightness and check out the night vision ones as well. All right, I'm going to see if I can try to do this without uh, losing the frame here. So it's up all the way, and let's see if we can notice the different levels of brightness here. So this should be eight, seven, six, five four, three, two, one, and now we should be into our night vision settings. That should be night vision one, and that should be night vision two. Now, through the camera, I cannot see anything through the emitter at all, and with my naked eye, when I look through this thing, I can't see anything. So let's go ahead and shut off the lights and see if we can see it through our PPS-14. 
Okay, so we'll start our night vision testing. So remember when I said that there, there was nothing visible to the naked eye uh, with the lights on, but when you turn the lights off and it's completely dark, you can definitely see whoop, right there the dimmest setting is just that. It's a really dim setting. It's not like an infrared projection or anything, which I fully expected. Uh, but in, if there's any light source at all, you can't see that dot at all. So let's see how Night Vision 1 looks behind a PBS-14. And it's perfectly usable as a sighting system through night vision. Uh, if you focus too hard on the dot, it'll start to bloom with the PVS-14. So, But if you're more target-focused, it gives you a nice crisp dot. Now we'll go on to night vision 2, which in essence is just a setting with a light that's just a little bit brighter. See if I can get it in focus here. So you can see right here that there still is a little bit of visible light. And like I said, it's just a very, a very dim setting. So when we go through, you can definitely see that red dot right there. Through night vision, it emits. Um, I'd have to put this on a pistol. Uh, to see how it actually performs with night vision, and I don't really have a way to film that, so unfortunately this is as good as it gets, but it is visible uh, through a PPS-14. All right, so now that we got our lights back on, uh, let's see what else this thing advertises, or if there's anything that we can adver do that it uh, advertises in this, uh, in this manual here. So I'll go ahead and flip through and see if there's anything else. All right, so I flipped through the manual, and I didn't see anything else that I could uh, test from the workbench here, but I'll just cover this last thing here, which is their limited lifetime warranty. And basically, they'll replace it if you have any problems. And let's see uh, the bullet points here. They said unlimited full lifetime warranty. They'll reply to you in less than three business days, free repair or replacement, fully transferable, and no questions asked, but they do appreciate feedback. Um, and I will say that their customer service is really good, and they always get back to me really quick, whether it's email, Instagram, phone. Uh, I've never not had them get a hold of me. Um, I like this. This reminds me of like uh, the Vortex warranty where it's no questions asked, but they do like feedback. So I was kind of troubleshooting some some base plate extensions, and they, they absolutely do appreciate feedback. And... Uh, you know, this, this is no different. So I'm excited to actually get this, uh, get this tested in the field. I'm going to go ahead and mount it to my Gen 5 Glock right now, but I'll probably end up moving it over to a Benelli M4 and then an M1A in the near future to shoot it at a match and really put some abuse and some mileage on the thing. So hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. I know there's not a lot of content out here about this cross armory red dot. So hopefully this gives you a little context and, and maybe we'll see if it's the right one for you.